So first we're gonna start off on a flat base and oh, there's an ant, watch out for him. We're gonna make sure the flat base is covered because you are gonna make a mess. Well, I know I make a mess because I'm messy. So I use Dr. Crafty resin um, that I got off Amazon. It comes in two parts, hardener and resin. I use a lot of gloves, like a lot. I do not like the resin touching my hands because it's impossible to get off. I also use Dixie cups I got from Dollar Tree so I can easily just throw them away when I'm done with them because I don't like to have any resin touching my hands. It's the worst. So I usually take the cups and I usually use a Sharpie to draw a line on them to show where I'm gonna pour up the hardener and the resin because it is important to have equal parts of both. They have to be equal. If they are not equal, then your project is not gonna cure properly. It's gonna be like gummy, which is kind of cool. <laughs> so we have our hardener that I poured and now I'm gonna pour the resin. The resin is a little bit thicker than the hardener. So you gotta be careful when you're pouring it because sometimes you pour too much, sometimes you pour too little. So I went back and I marked the lines that it filled up to because I wanted both of my parts to be equal. I don't want my projects to be gummy. So this is how I mix them because this is, gets the best results I've come to realize. And I take the spatula and I make sure I scrape the sides of each cup because it's so much resin and hardener that's left in the cups that it'll make you mad that you're wasting it. So I suggest to scrape it and scrape it. So after you finish scraping, you're gonna mix, mix, and mix for like three minutes. So I got a, a few of the supplies that I'm gonna need for this project and I'm gonna be making a few ashtrays. First, I'm gonna start off with a mealworm ashtray um, out of dry mealworms. Yes, they are real, which I think is gonna be pretty cool. I also use a ton of popsicle sticks because I don't like to reuse anything when it comes to resin because the colors transfer so easily. What I'm doing now is getting some tape so I can clean off the silicone molds because the silicone molds get a lot of things stuck to them. So what I do is I cut a piece of tape and I wrap around my hand. Like, you know, you're trying to make a at-home lint roller. So you just wrap around your hand and you just pat the silicone mold so you can get all the excess, all the debris off the silicone mold so you can ruin your project. Now I'm opening up my supplies, getting everything ready for when I pour the resin. I'm going to mix a little bit of resin with some of the mealworms. I had to smell them. They kind of smell like, like dog food or something. Like a little dog tree or something. So I just pour them in there. And they're not alive. They're dead. They've been dead. I got them for my gecko. But he doesn't like them. So I got those and I'm just going to mix it up. Make it smooth. And make it look nice so that the mealworms are consistent throughout the entire mixture. So I'm gonna evenly pour the mixture around the ashtray mold. I got these molds off Amazon. They're actually coasters, but I use them as ashtrays. So I'm gonna pour it all around in a circle so I can get a nice even layer. They're gonna come out clumped out like that. So I just take a popsicle stick and I just spread it out just to make sure that it doesn't cure that way. Cause that'd be ugly. They were all clumped up together and you couldn't see their actual definition. So I'm just gonna pour the rest on top. And I go back after each time I pour and spread them apart and make, just to make sure that they're not all touching each other. Once I finally stopped being a perfectionist after 30 minutes, I finally put it over to the side and put it on a flat base so that it can cure properly. Now I'm gonna move on to my deep dish ashtray. And for this ashtray, I'm going to use a gold leaf, which I have. I just place that in the cup and I stir it around and it comes out looking like this. Next time, I'll show the stirring process because it's actually pretty cool. Now I'm gonna use some alcohol ink. My alcohol ink bottles are messed up because like I said, I'm a messy crafter. So that's what you expect. I use Pinata alcohol ink. It's my favorite. It's the richest to me. 
when it comes to alcohol ink i just do whatever design comes to my mind it's pretty much that simple as long as you know your colors and what colors don't go together and what colors do go together you'll be able to figure it out quite easily What I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to make some type of design on the top part of the ashtray because right now this is the back of the ashtray or I should say the bottom so I'm trying to stick a um, toothpick in there to really try to get some type of definition on the top part of the ashtray <laughs> Once I finally get the design to where I like it, I move it off to the side to a flat level base so that it can cure properly and the design won't move too much. Now I'm going to use the taping method to clean off this silicone mold that I'm going to use for my next project. I'm going to do a little rainbow effect. I mean, who doesn't love a little rainbow? So I'm going to take each powder and I'm going to put just a little bit in each cup. And then I'm going to pour resin on top and then I'm going to stir it up. So since I'm doing a rainbow theme, I'm gonna try to do Roy G. Bibb like we learned in school. You know, red, orange, yellow, um, green, blue, indigo, and violet. I'm trying to do that in a circular motion so that I can see all the colors in the resin ashtray because I want all the colors to pop and explode. And my bad, y'all, only recording half the, the resin mold i didn't even realize that i was doing that until i got like into the orange or to the yellow i think but if you stay tuned i promise you i'm gonna move up the mold so you can see the whole design sorry about that you know beginners gotta start somewhere right
again, once my project is completed, I'm gonna move it to the side to a level base so that it doesn't spill or it doesn't sag the design. Now I'm gonna do some little trinkets with some leftover resin. I'm just gonna make some um, glow-in-the-dark um, dinosaur keychains. As I finish up, I'll let you all know that it does take about 12 to 24 hours to cure um, resin projects because of the resin that I'm using, which is Dr. Crafty. So I will be showing you all the unveiling of my finished projects because I'm so excited. It's the most exciting thing ever to see what your project looks like the next day. Even if it turns out ugly, it's still fun. It's like Christmas. So I'm going to wrap this up and I'm going to see you all later. Thank you.